And Sylvia Krapinska is in the house to talk to us about her Artist of the Month, who I believe is called a Shan Her. Is that the name? Is that how you pronounce it, Sylvia? Hello, hello. He is actually pronounced Han Her. Ah, Han Her, even though his name begins with an S. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes, I know, it's intriguing, but uh, there you go. Oh. Uh, so here we are, the sixth artist of the month, Han He, a Korean sculptor. His surname actually has roots deep down. 2,000 years ago in India, there was a princess uh, mm. with, a, with his surname called He. So let me tell you more about him. Please do. Yeah. San He is a Korean-born sculptor living in London right now. He uses wide a range of materials. Some of them are hard and heavy duty like concrete wood, contrasting those more delicate, for example, musical instruments, uh, delicate porcelain, for example, basketball coins, which he combines together and builds structures in form of architectural features, columns, uh, broken pillars, walls, things like that. Let me tell you how he installed these in an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Because that's quite important, the process that goes into these. He builds the structures in the space and makes them look like they belong there, like they've always been there. So they look like another column next door or something. <laughs> but of course, uh, closer inspecting it, he's got this twist and turn in them. Uh, the trick about how he takes them down is... I assumed, like, okay, well, yeah, you just knock it down with hammers and, you know, roll it down. Mm. No, surprisingly, he removes the whole pillar, the whole wall he brings in, crates it up and uses it again for the next installation. Right, let me just try to understand <laughs> this now. <laughs> so you're saying that as part of his work, he will carry two, well, I'm sure he's got some people to help him, or he's got very strong muscles. No, no, he needs help. <laughs> If it's an installation which involves a wall, yeah. he will actually carry that exact wall to the place where he's going to be exhibiting. He'll bring part of his own wall that he will then install the in the space and make it as part of the wall that exists already. So it's almost like it's their own, but it isn't. So he mirrors com exactly what there is with his features. With it's, it either extends it or makes it smaller. You know, there, you, there's these twists and turns you've wow. got to. Yes, wow. that's what happens. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm still, wow. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm visualising it. So, I mean, is, is it because he wants to create a form of illusion? I think he wants to create something that is a moment of surprise. You discover suddenly this hole in a pillar mm. with a surprise waiting for you, which I will explain very shortly okay. what it is. Um, I would like to say more about his inspirations because mm. you'll begin to understand. He told me he likes con construction sites, understandably. Mm. Right. <laughs> There's places where they are there and no one notices them. They're always there and we just walk by, pass by them and don't notice them. And similarly, he likes just places where they are neutral, where there is just some work going on, but not you, you're not quite sure what. Uh, there was a gallery in Italy he walked in, and there there was an, an exhibition on. He told me he just admired this this installation, and then to his embarrassment, he found out it was actually a structure <laughs> construction site <laughs> that helped him to create his own language. In oh, fact, right. from that moment on. <laughs> Back to inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so hence the, the wall, the concrete, <laughs> yes, right, yes, okay. Yes. Um, uh, he re revealed to me that he, is, he has a scar and cornea of one of his eyes. And the way how that is seen, he only can see that when he's looking up on a white wall or white surface. There are a few lines, three or four lines he can just see in his own vision. No one else can see that. Mm. Th that fact on it, of its own that no one else can and he can and is there and he often doesn't notice it brings another exploration in his work. Mm -hmm. So he, he explores this sort of aspect as well. On top of that, which is the best part for me, is when he was a boy growing up in Korea, in an old Asian city, there was an old castle, ruins of a castle he, he used to go to, and he could find old Korean porcelain and ceramics and wow. treasures. Mm. That shaped his inspirations big time, I think. Mm. Um, so, he, what, so he uses a lot of porcelain, does he? He uses porcelain, yeah. Right. He uses the fine Korean traditional porcelain in his work. Uh, he studied sculpture both in Korea and also in Slate School of Art. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, won a prestigious award, the uh, the Open West, uh, which is in Cheltenham, which is an uh, international exhibition and competition. Mm -hmm. Now, to his work, okay, because I can't wait to, to describe this one. <laughs> there is a bit of a humor story attached to that one. 
It's called the Broken Pillar Number no. Five. Mm -hmm. It was installed in front of uh, Cheltenham University. Uh, the pillar that he installed was called Broken Pillar, and it looked like a broken pillar too. Mm. It was mirroring the other side of the entrance where there was already an existing pillar, so mm -hmm. it looked like it could have always been there. Just surprised, some students are arriving on the day. Oh no, there's a broken pillar. So they called emergency <laughs> services and the fire brigade arrived and oh, uh, cornered the area, taped around, dangerous, do not enter. Of course, <laughs> he received a phone call, come and sort this out, what's going on? Uh, by the time we got there, the emergency were gone and it was all sorted because it was then cleared out. But uh, <laughs> it just brings you thinking, how brave is this to put a public guard in a space? And, and was that the like impact that? he wanted to create? He wanted the fire services to arrive? I don't think so. <laughs> I asked him whether he was worried and he said, well, at first, like, oh, no, I can't do this. I, said, I can't do my work like this. Right. <laughs> but I think he overcame that and uh, it's been fine since then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the broken pillar. But then when we come back, you can yes. talk to us more about the work. Of, Definitely. Is, is it Han Her? It's Han Her. It's Han Her. Okay. <laughs> 12.22, Colourful Life with me, Rosemary Laie. Sylvia Kropinska is, is still in the house talking about her artist of this month, who is San Her. That That's right. Oh, hello. <laughs> hey, there you go. And such an interesting character who basically gets his people to carry his installations because installations, we're talking about walls and pillars to be exhibited. I mean... Really interesting. Yes, we're having a very good time in the studio, mm. aren't we? Uh, another example uh, of his installation called Broken Pillar is in fact the first piece of his I've ever seen and I got inspired to have him as my artist of the month was in the Gazilli Art House Gallery in Dover Street in London. The pillar, imagine a situation, you're in a space, uh, there are pillars around you and it is just one of those pillars he made to adapt into the space mm. as it fits perfectly. However, if you come nearer, there is a wall, there is a hole in that pillar, slightly higher up, and you see a part of a porcelain vase, Korean porcelain vase in it, <laughs> and it makes you think, oh, hang on, <laughs> how is that possible? <laughs> I imagined, I tell you what I imagined. I imagined that artists came and just started digging in a pillar and discovered this treasure of a, of a porcelain <laughs> Korean vase and left all the rubble on the floor, mm. which is part of the installation. And uh, perhaps it will be coming back. The work itself was so alive to mm. me. <laughs> uh, the contrast with the fine ceramic and the, the, the concrete was mm. quite exceptional. Very brave again. <laughs> So, I mean, <laughs> you know, when I want to talk about this guy, because I am, I'm so in awe. So when you mentioned about the, the rubble, the rubble is part of the installation. Yes. But I can imagine people thinking, oh dear, you know, we need a dustpan and, and broom, you know, <laughs> to, to clear this out. But it's part of the installation. Yes. I wonder if people have been tempted to actually, you know, um, sweep it away. Um Perhaps the curators were keeping a close eye on, yes. <laughs> on the installation just in case, but it was a very nice space in Gazali Art House and I'm sure it's been well looked after. after. Yes. And did you have a chance to ask him how long it actually takes him to create that piece? Um, well, the piece itself is already created. Well, you mean at the very beginning? Yes, because he'll have to create the, the pillar first of all to match the existing pillars yes, and then yes. dig away to put the porcelain in. Yes, I don't know that. No, there would be another question I yes. would have for him. Yes. Mm -hmm. So instead, for example, in different sculptures, he instead of porcelain, he can also use a saxophone. He'd done before. Right. And coins. Uh, this is the next work I'd like to talk about. Lucky Coins, the mm. title. Um, did you know that uh, every time there is a building built, at the end, there are coins put into uh, the cornerstone of the building? No, I had no I've idea. I've just found out that from, right. from someone, and it's perhaps for good luck or for, for sort of celebration. Mm. So he produced a similar sort of work, opening our eyes, uh, digging a hole in the wall, and mm. there you go, you've got some coins there. It's like another treasure, mm. uh, which is, you think, how is that done again? But... As we know now, he <laughs> brings the work in and he installs it and makes it look natural in this space. So mm -hmm. you can you can think about it in the way you want. I see it in a treasure and a wall and things that we we don't see and they are there and you don't even know about them. Mm. Yeah, he's he's either got a very big boot of a car or he's <laughs> <laughs> or everything is transported in a big van. <laughs> uh, yes, when uh, when I interviewed him. Uh, 
I asked him the same question because there was a long uh, circle on mm. the wall, a massive installation, as we discussed. And I asked him, how did you get this up? Did you have a massive scaffold? I said, no, there was actually the forklift. It was the proper... Wow. Yeah, <laughs> so he has a heavy duty <laughs> <laughs> equipment. Amazing yeah. for his work. So you're talking about the wall that I saw That's with the, the engraved circle. I think yes. it was called Circle on the Wall. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, when I first saw that, and I thought, well, it looks like someone has vandalised the wall. Because, you know, if you're just looking around in that space yes and that's an, an exact wall mm. which is part of the space and suddenly you see this engravement yes you'll think someone's vandalized yes, and, uh, yes. but it's his work it's also there are certain aesthetics that he always keeps and mm. keeps uniform so so perhaps you might think that but where it's placed in gallery and it's it, there are strict rules he follows as well that's why it's intriguing mm -hmm. last work for today yeah we have time for one more yes which is ball in the pillar this is quite personal to me because there is a basketball involved. I played eight years basketball, so right. I thought, yeah, I have to say this one. <laughs> um, a, a space with a wall, with a pillar in the middle, broken. In the middle, there is a basketball, like holding the pillar so it mm. doesn't collapse. Mm. But it isn't squashing. You, you'd imagine that, you know, it would squash. No, it isn't. That's the secret. He filled in with concrete. Don't uh. tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so just to keep you guessing, how is that possible again? Talking about perhaps how we can take more pressure than we think of mm -hmm. ourselves, or how mm -hmm. much can we take? It's open to your interpretation, of course, but yeah, there you go. Oh, wow, fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And so where can we see more of his work? Yes, today, last day of the Gazelle Art House body exhibition, I would strongly recommend go and see it until 8pm. Uh, and also in no, no format space where I interviewed him, uh, there is uh, an ex a gallery in uh, South East London. Mm -hmm. Check it online. If you'd like to know more and or you lost something I just mentioned today, you're always welcome to visit my blog sylviakrupinska.wordpress.com which is S-I-L-V-I-A-K-R-U-P-I-N-S-K-A dot com. Uh, let me tell you about May's Artists of the Month. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, very exciting artist, underwater eco sculptor, internationally acclaimed Jason de Kairos Taylor will be the theme of next Artist of the Month. Too exciting. Underwater sculpturing. <laughs> That's right. I am so looking forward to this. Thank you so much, Sylvia. My pleasure. Now, the, the, the gallery you mentioned, the one down, is one in Dover Street, isn't That's it? That's right. And you have all the details on your yes, blog. Yes, Dover Wonderful. Street. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. Mayfair. And just remind us of your blog um, address, please. sylviakrupinska.wordpress.com S-I-L-V-I-A-K-R-U-P-I-N-S-K-A dot wordpress.com fabulous thank Sylvia. you we'll look forward to speaking to you oh it has to be a whole month doesn't it yes a whole month but we'll we'll keep in there thank you so much my Sylvia. pleasure wow how interesting son her eh and this is just amazing i mean i've been on sylvia's um blog and i've seen the installations and i'm like how did he do that so i'm so glad that um she explained to us that he carries the wall i thought i should have asked her the size of the wall actually so you know you can imagine going to a space and you have an identical wall but with some type of engravement in there that is part of the work and imagine going to a space where you have pillars Again, identical pillars in this space, but yet one of them is completely different. One of them has a hole in the middle of it and has been suspended by a basketball. Again, that is his work. Absolutely superb.